We've got a new invest out there that we're closely monitoring for our friends out in the Lesser Antilles, and we're watching over the next three to four days as what's left of 93L back in the eastern Gulf that made its way through Mississippi and Louisiana circles back through the Carolinas and ends up right back pretty much where it started with the assist of not only our upper ridge over the deep south, but the next trough that's helping to intensify some of that energy that should be left over open water. And then lastly, we've got some more tropical waves in hot pursuit of newly formed 94L. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everyone. And as a matter of fact, look where we are. We're back, as they always say, or as I should say, I always say, we're back here in the Weather Center. Thank you all so much for taking some time out of your Sunday to join me here in the Home Weather Center. Gosh, feels good to be back at the helm, to tell you the truth. But going to be heading back out as soon as tomorrow afternoon, so this is going to be one of the only videos I bring you from the Home Weather Center before we transition right back to the Mobile Weather Center, but we're going to continue our coverage. We've got a lot to discuss. I'm going to try to abbreviate it today since it is Sunday. It's July 20th, 2025. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I do hope whoever is watching right now, you've had a fantastic weekend. You continue to do so, and you have a beautiful start to the week ahead. If you are new to the channel, please kindly consider clicking that that subscribe button let's give that like button a little nudge go ahead and share this information as well to those you believe would benefit from it especially those who you think would benefit from it if you're watching down in the Caribbean get that word of mouth go and communicate share the channel share the information we're gonna talk all about it today as well as a few other signals I'm monitoring and what the month of August could look like let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are on the upcoming peak of the hurricane season and the things we are going to discuss in this video or just drop me a hello it's always great to receive some of the sweet conversations and comments that you guys drop in there it's fantastic and motivating to keep me pumping out this content on a regular basis but let's go ahead and get started here is national hurricane center's homepage. got my epic pen back in business this here is 94 l i'll tell you the truth you know I kind of thought this came out of left field, but it does make sense. When you look at the low-level and mid-level winds with this tropical wave, we are developing a center of circulation. It is kind of consolidated, and we still have thunderstorms firing around, and I think the main reason why National Hurricane Center leaves us at a 10 for 10 split you can see right here we have formation probabilities 10% over the next two days, 10% over the next seven days. And you can see in the narrative, environmental conditions appear only marginally conducive for development during the next day or so. But then as soon as we get beyond the Lesser Antilles, and truthfully, as soon as we get beyond, I believe that's about 10 degrees north latitude. Once we get beyond that, we start to run into that Saharan air layer, a little bit of what's called subsidence or sinking that is still in place that could prevent this from further organizing. Models have been a little jazzed about it. They are showing a brief window of about 24 hours of an opportunity for this thing to really spin up into maybe a potential tropical cyclone that could warn a couple watches out there for the Windward and Leeward Islands or maybe a very low-end tropical storm. But truthfully, I'm not all that confident in it myself. Models, once again, kind of pulled the rug out from under us. Last several days, ensembles and operational computer models looked very warm and fuzzy about this thing. But then they kind of caught whiff of all the, I guess you could say, bad air, the bad quality of the environment just to the north of where our MDR is. We're still sorting that out, but we have been evolving. We're going to talk about that as well. And also, by the way, if you notice, I'm up in the upper left-hand corner this time. I got some feedback and a couple comments over the last few videos. So we're testing something out. Let me know in the comments if you like the new configuration or if I should just go back to normal. On top of 94L, going to be watching this not once, but possibly twice over again for homegrown potential. And then we also have not one, but two additional tropical waves that are fairly vigorous back behind our current invest area. Let's get you over to the satellite right now, and we'll take a look. So over the southeast... You can see we have that rock and ridge back in place once again. Our negative PNA just doesn't want to go anywhere. It does not want to go anywhere. So to tell you the truth, 
as we get closer to the peak of the hurricane season, this is just a little on the concerning side. We'll talk about that towards the back end of the video, but as you can see over the Ohio Valley, the lower Midwest, the Appalachians, Tennessee, Kentucky here, we have some thunderstorms flaring up. That is partially what is left of 93L, as well as a major shortwave trough that's wandering through the pattern, and it's going to end up off the southeast coast again, try to develop a very slow spinning area of low pressure, slingshot back over central florida and then end up right back into the gulf and if you notice i'll draw an x up here as well it's following the direction of the flow around that anti-cyclone that high height center perfectly go ahead and finish the streamline there and you can see that's probably why models are whispering to us that we may even get a third return of this wraparound moisture and little bits of vorticity out there. Now, we'll turn our attention to the MDR. There's Invest 94L cooking. Doesn't look that bad. Truthfully, it doesn't look that bad. You get very small semblances of what looks to be outflow on the northern side of it. Very weak outflow. But, you know, it's still doing its thing. We have another tropical wave just upstream of that. Models are kind of latching onto. Not quite doing a whole lot with. And then we have another MCS that's currently over Africa. Africa that does have some pretty good amplitude with it and once it crashes offshore that becomes a third tropical wave we will continue to monitor the third one back there is what models are also latching onto as well for the potential of development we're getting close to our Kelvin wave passing through so we're gonna have to see exactly what that does for our environment it could help to saturate things a little bit more out there as well as encourage a bit of a transition from sinking to more of a lifting mechanism through the tropics Here's an up close and personal view of 94L. Let me get my face out of the way so you all can see. Healthy tropical wave, you know, for all things considered, it's July 20th. Typically, we aren't tracking these Cabo Verde waves, at least as robust as they look. So again, I'm going to give you the infamous catchphrase, famous last words, regardless of development, our friends out there, Trinidad, Tobago, the rest of the Windward Islands, this could trickle into some of the Leeward Islands as well, maybe even as far west as the U.S. British Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, you could see your rain chances upped just a little bit. Now, where I think our invest is currently located, if you look, it's very difficult, but there is some northeasterly flow there and a little bit of westerly flow right there. And notice we have a pretty consistent convective burst right there. So I would not be surprised if our invest area is buried in this area somewhere, just kind of overcast by some of our cirrus that's moving over top these thunderstorm clouds, or I should say these thunderstorm towers. Obviously, the cirrus is produced by the thunderstorms. David, come on, don't lose all your credibility now. <laughs> it's hidden under the thunderstorms by the clouds. Well, gee, you think. So I do think we do have a spin in there. Now it's just a matter of as it lifts out of the ITCZ, out of the monsoon trough configuration out there, you can see we have some open cell Q up here, which typically means sinking air. We also have our Saharan air layer, a little bit of the dust up there as well. So we're going to have to see if this thing does have a fighting chance over the next 24 hours or so. Now we're going to fast forward as much as we can, but keep it coherent so you all are tracking. We'll go to 120 hours out. We have a number of different signals out there. We've got something in the subtropics with that same front that's dropping in with 93L remnants and extra vorticity at the tail end of that. That's also flaring up east-northeast of Bermuda. There is our second attempt at trying to do something off the Big Bend of Florida, the Gulf Coast of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. There's our current 94L right there moving through the pattern this is as of this upcoming friday it's expected to start to wander through our lesser antilles on a west northwest track and then here's that next tropical wave i showed you that's currently expected to move off of africa within the next 18 to 24 hours from there we get even another signal if you notice you go past 192 216 to 240 hours, about 10 days out from now, and you start to see the probabilities picking up south of the CV islands out there. You go even further beyond that, and you can see a steady uptick in our probabilities. And then once again, you turn your attention towards the southeast, the mid-Atlantic, and we have another signal, all thanks to that negative PNA. Now, that's not unusual. I'll tell you that right now. It is not unusual. We saw this a lot during 2020. We had our negative PNA with a ridge just spinning clockwise so every little bit of vorticity that came off the united states coupling with whatever energy we still have in the subtropics the tropics it kind of just plops and marinates right over here and we have our warmest waters still in place out there so it is technically a breeding ground after all you take a look here 
at our probabilities, or I should say our individual ensembles. And you can see the four signals right away. This is only 10 days out. We've got a little bit of a signal down here near Florida, near the Carolinas. We're going to continue to watch. There's that subtropical symbol. I'm surprised we haven't gotten anything out of that from National Hurricane Center. Maybe we'll see as we wander into the first couple days of next week. We have one random rogue member there that does try to go full hurricane strength before going towards the Dominican Republic. Definitely an outlier. And then there is that next signal I told you about over on the tropical depression probabilities there. You can see already a nice little clustering of our individual low pressure members there showing something with that next wave, the one that still has yet to splash down from Africa. All right, now let's take a look at the Saharan dust. So previously I'd mentioned that we have seen below average amounts across the tropics. While that's true, given we are slowly making the transition out to the Cabo Verde portion of the hurricane season where we have to start tracking our easterly waves as they come off of Africa, this is where they are going to start to take some hits because if you notice, we do have a pretty decent, albeit a very thin plume out there, and it is still fairly well to the north of 10 degrees latitude. Our invest right now is well to the south of that and is expected to lift towards the north, so this stream there of denser Saharan air might be a detriment to it, and then you factor in all the speed shear we have that begins to increase the moment you go west of the Lesser Antilles all through there, thanks to our 850 millibar trade winds, our mid-level flow out there if we had a barrel maybe it had a fighting chance but in this case this thing has yet to even organize so obviously we're not looking at another major hurricane wandering through trying to resist these different elements playing a role on it as you go forward in time though this is where it gets kind of critical. Notice we start to break down that Saharan air layer just a little bit. We get a little bit of increased saturation as that next tropical wave comes through. So this is where it's kind of all that tropical timing, that tropical lottery I've told you about. If we get some waves in between these major plumes of dust, which in fact, according to the NASA model, if you look, our dust plume isn't quite as aggressive once we get beyond the 24th of July. We see a lot of it washing out. It's still there, but in my very humble opinion, this is very distorted. It's a very thin layer. Notice we don't have nearly as much of the shades of the purples, the magentas that you see coming off of Africa here. It's not fully spread out across the MDR or into the subtropical Atlantic. Not nearly the same as what we saw last year. Last year we had the combination of the dry air plunges on the east side of our anticyclone, our subtropical high in the Atlantic, coupled with a very aggressive Saharan air layer that continued to push these things into the dry air whenever they wandered off of Africa. So not nearly as hostile. We'll have to give it a little more time, see if these Kelvin waves that are wandering through the pattern can do anything for us. If you notice, we are just about right underneath it. We got a couple more days, and then we'll start to feel the influence of Kelvin wave one, weak perturbation there. Then we get another one that comes on through and then you can see as we continue through Africa, Africa, well, yes, as we continue through August, Africa is going to light up with the propagation of our MJO, a little bit of a standing wave that flares up from about the 26th of July all the way to almost the full month period till about the 21st of August. If you notice, this is the most recent update of our Euro velocity anomalies. So it'll be very interesting to see how this evolves, but I'm looking at this large corridor there. If you notice, and you remember what my title of the last video was, we could get into, I'll say, a busy phase. Not a very active phase. I'm not saying we're going to get into a phase where we're just having named storms developing left and right, but I do think we are going to be busy. Busy in the sense of we've got a lot to track. And even right now, we still have four potentially upcoming five signals we'll have to continue to monitor as we go over the next 7 to 14 days. So it'll be very interesting to see how things evolve. And as we get ready to close out, I just wanted to show you this. So take a look at the warming trend that we've been seeing across the Atlantic. I want you to screenshot this in your minds mentally. Canary current warming, got much of the tropical Atlantic warming, and we are cooling where it matters most. Notice we are very much so warming in the Northeast Atlantic again, cooling across as much of the subtropics as we possibly can, and then warming through the MDR. Now, do you have that screenshot? Do you? I'll give you another three seconds, two one. All right. Bam. What does that look like? Drop me in the comments if you're still watching up to this point, but I thought this was very interesting because we talked about this leading up to the hurricane season. And if you look in the top left corner there, I'll get my face out of the way. That is 2004. 2004. 
I did say that we could have a sneaky analog on the table for the peak of the hurricane season. So now it's just a matter of will we continue to see the anomalous warming like we have been seeing over the last few weeks extending through the eastern Atlantic and down through the tropics. Because if I switch us back to our current SST evolution, that's looking fairly similar. Fairly similar. You know? If we look at the actual anomalies, we aren't too far off quite yet. The Bermuda warm blob is there, but notice our subtropics and mid-latitudes are starting to carve out that infamous horseshoe look once again, and we now have warmth pretty much engulfing much of the tropical Atlantic. So if anything does cause this season to fall apart, if you will, at the seam and not go above average, it's definitely not going to be our SST configuration. And with that being said, thank you all so much for taking some time out of your Sunday once again to watch me here in the Weather Center for your latest tropical update. I do appreciate all your continued support, and we will talk to you again very soon. That'll be the conclusion of this video. Lots to track, lots to watch, but nothing ominous just yet on the immediate horizon. But we all know as we get closer and closer to August and the calendar start of the peak of the hurricane season, things can change in the literal blink of an eye. Saw it last year right before Milton. I'll never forget that. I'll tell you that story on a live stream one of these days. But until next time, folks, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.